So, it has come to my notice that the fastest way to grow as a developer on YouTube is to build Minecraft. 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 So, I made one. And for those of you guys living on the rock and probably have never heard of the game I'm talking about, Minecraft is a blocky, pixel style, online RPG game played by millions of people all around the world. It has easily become one of the games with the highest amount of active players and also one of the most streamed games on Twitch. No, seriously, you legit have to be living on the rock for you to not know about this game. However, what you're seeing right now isn't the real Minecraft, it's a version I made which I call Divecraft. Let me guess, you named it that because your name's Divine? What? No, it's because it's made out of divs. Okay, that makes sense. Now, for those of you that watch my videos, you guys already know the drill. No use of libraries or game engines, just these guys. Ready? Let's go. So, I started off by making a new project folder that is going to hold my three core files my HTML, my CSS, and my JavaScript. And then I opened it up with my favorite ID. And next, I checked if my JavaScript file was linked to my HTML, which it actually wasn't. So once I fixed that, I was all set. I started off simple. I rendered a 50 by 50 pixel cube to the browser. Then next, I decided to work on some camera movements. Now keep in mind, we're coding totally from scratch, so we don't have access to any inbuilt camera utility. But fear not, because remember, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. In other words, we're going to have to improvise. So CSS comes with a property called transform. Now other CSS properties take in one item as its value. On the other hand, the transform property takes in a function as its value. The function then takes in one value as its argument. Now there are a whole bunch of these transform functions, but we're only going to be focusing on these guys. The rotate x, which is as the name implies, allows you to rotate elements in the x-axis. The rotate y, which pretty much does the opposite. And finally, the transfer z function, which is simply the distance from an element to your screen. Now to be able to imitate camera movements, we need to be able to manipulate the values of these guys in our JavaScript. Now since JavaScript reads CSS values as strings, we can just do a simple concatenation, passing these variables as the values of each function, which we can then adjust based on some condition. Then once that was done, I finally had some basic camera movements going on. Then next, I rendered a platform aka the ground, which is where the whole crafting is going to happen. Now to understand the whole concept, we need to take the game of Minecraft as a whole grid system, which is basically a whole bunch of evenly defined cells. I use the word evenly because they are all of the same size. In this case, I'm making mine 50 by 50 pixels. So to imitate this, we need to set up our own grid system. Now CSS does have its own inbuilt grid system, but I chose not to use it because there's tendencies for it to have limitations moving forward, mostly because it wasn't built for stuff like this, which is why I decided to make my own. To do that, all I did was write a quick loop that basically creates a cell and spams its x position across the width of the ground y is y positions across the height of the ground nice then next we need to make it so a block is created when the user clicks on a cell which the first thing of course requires us to listen for a click event now your next question will probably be how do we get to tell which cell the user clicks on well if you're familiar with javascript and the dom i'm sure you're aware that this e guy simply returns a whole bunch of properties now these properties are a whole bunch but we're only going to be making use of one of them which is the path now the path property works like this it returns an array of values the first value being the exact element the user clicks on followed by its parent containers so whenever we click on a cell the path array is going to be the cell the user clicks on followed by the ground followed by the whole canvas. <clears throat> so now that we have access to the cell the user clicks on, that means we also have access to the cell's properties, which of course includes its x and y positions. So all we have to do is to make a rule that basically says create a block 50 pixels from the ground in the exact position of a cell the user clicks on. And just like that, we could now create blocks on the ground. But we're not done. We still need to be able to stack blocks on top of each other. Because at the moment, if you click on top of a block, nothing happens. Bruh. So at this point, I felt like, I mean, I've already gone this far. Stacking cubes on each other can't be that hard, right? Boy, was I wrong. I spent hours, day and nights, trying to come up with the perfect cube stacking algorithm. Until I finally had it. Now, first of all, disclaimer, you are probably going to need decent knowledge of programming for you to be able to fully understand the concept, but it's really not that difficult, so I'll try to break it down as simple as I can. So basically, what we want is to be able to stack cubes on each other, right? So I thought of making use of the exact rule I made previously, only that the cube is going to be 50 pixels away from the face of the cube the user clicks on. So the first thing I thought of was to create a variable, which is going to be the starting point of the stack, which is zero. So if you click on a cell, we want to increase the variable by 50, which pretty much obeys the first rule of 50 pixels away from the ground. So what we then want is when the user clicks on top of a cube, it adds another 50 to the variable, making it 100 pixels. They click again, it's another 50, making it 150 pixels. Just like that, it keeps on increasing every time the user clicks on the top. Now this algorithm works quite well initially, but um, yeah, but if you think closely, this actually makes sense. The reason it's doing this is because the first stack made has already increased the variable to this amount, which is why when we try to make a new stack, it starts counting from where we left off 
in our previous one. So to fix this, we can't hard code the starting position as zero. We need to find a way for the JavaScript to calculate it on its own. Now the first thing you most likely think of would be to use the good old get computer style to get property value method, which is exactly what I did. But the results isn't what I expected. Instead of returning the value, it returned, wait for it, a matrix function. Yeah, I know, those are my exact thoughts too. What the hell is a matrix function? So at this point, I just simply did what every developer does when they come across something they've never seen before. Go straight to ask Google. And then I came across this article that pretty much explained how the whole thing works. But honestly, I didn't really have the patience to read through all of that, so I just scrapped the whole get computer style idea and started thinking of other ways to do it. And then it hit me. All I just want to do is to get this guy out of these guys. The only thing is I have to do it in a way that I don't know what this guy is. So I looked it up on Google on how to do exactly that and it showed me this, the slice method, which is probably something I heard of in a JavaScript course I took once in high school, but I guess I didn't really pay much attention to. But it basically does exactly what I'm trying to do, which is to get specific parts out of a string. So once I finally did that, the bug was fixed because the stack starts counting from the position the user clicks on, no longer from zero. Then afterwards, I just basically repeated the same logic for all sides of the cube and I was finally able to stack cubes like a pro. So at this point, I was mostly done with the game. All that was left was to work on sprites, textures, and game UI. I used Paint for the textures and sprites. Most people use standard pixel art softwares, but I don't know, I guess I'm just built different. I chose to draw them myself because I felt it would be more fun and more rewarding. But after like the fourth sprite, I got tired and just stole the rest from the internet. Then I walked to some items, which for now would just be the axe and a sword. I set the axe to destroy a whole cube while the sword only destroys the side you click on. Then for the final touches, I designed the front page, added some music and sound effects, and yeah, we're done.